I guess he he didn't feel like a lot of the guys took took this seriously enough, right, in terms of preparing their body for this yeah. weekly grind. So there's a couple of different angles kind of to this and, and some of the different injuries and, and how the body preparation from your recovery to your training plays into this. First thing he talked, DJ talked about specifically was the recovery, where after practice, he didn't think enough guys were getting in the cold tub and, and starting that recovery process. The faster your body recovers, uh, obviously the more time, the, the better it can heal, the better you're going to practice the next day. There's a trickle-down effect uh, for as quickly as you start your recovery, and it's also going to make it more effective. So you get, say, in the cold tub, or you put on, uh, you may have seen athletes on Twitter, Instagram, whatever, with these big, giant, black kind of cases on their legs. They're called Normatec. Mm -hmm. um, and and th those are uh, a great essential recovery tool that a lot of NFL-caliber athletes are, are using. And so the faster you start that process, the better. And so when DJ says, like, guys would just not really do anything after practice. They would just like, go home. That's, that's problematic. Or they get in the shower, they'd BS in the locker room, whatever it is, and they go on to their meetings. Well, getting in a cold tub hurts. It does. I can see why they wouldn't want to do it. You have Miserable. to suck it up and do yeah. it. Um, so these guys just weren't doing it. And they were going home, and they were just they weren't rehabbing. Uh, apparently, properly. from what he saw, yeah, they didn't. They they didn't. There weren't enough guys doing it, and really, every guy should be doing it. Um, you know. I did a the, my fitness podcast that I do on. Uh, we did with, uh, one with Lorenzo Alexander in the middle of the season. And this guy's 34 years old. Was the Pro Bowl MVP last year. Is playing at a really high level at 34 years old. And we asked Zoe, um, who's my co-host, is his trainer. We asked Zoe, like, what are some of the things you do during the season and and the off season to make sure that you can still play? He's getting two massages a week, dry needling, cupping, chiropractic work a couple times a week. There's just an endless list. And, you know, a guy like James Harrison, $300,000 a year he spends on to keep his body ready. Mm -hmm. It's insane. A guy like DJ, I don't think DJ or Zoe is spending 300000 I know Zoe's not spending $300,000. Um, but they are really high-level thinkers about their body. They know their bodies really well. They know what it takes. They understand the science and why they're doing these things. And so DJ's standard for what he expects guys to do is really, really high. And so that's that recovery element. He doesn't see guys going to that standard. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one of the things that that's important. Well, can't I, the team and the training staff kind of force the guys to do it to a point? But there's it's very limited. They can't. Maybe that's something they do in the future. Maybe they say everyone's required in the cold tub after practice. You either have to see the chiropractor, the masseuse, get in the cold tub, or use Normatec after practice. Yeah, you might have. And and if they don't do it, then there's a fine or something. I mean, there's got to be some way I, to enforce it. I would think so. May, there might be constrictions within the CBA that limit how much you can require. But, I mean, amongst themselves, amongst the player leadership, they can certainly kangaroo court it. Yeah. Um, and they should. I mean, this stuff is essential. It matters. Um, then, so that that's like, that's thing one on the injuries. Thing two is... How are you training in the offseason? Football, by nature, as is any sport, is what we would call an uncontrolled environment. It seems pretty straightforward and simple. You don't know what's going to happen. So how often in your training are you put in situations that are uncontrolled? So a weightlifting session is a very controlled environment. You know exactly what you're doing. You know how many sets, how many reps, all that kind of stuff. So in your movement training, as, as you prepare for your quickness and things, are you is your trainer or whoever you're working with forcing you to make decisions so that your body is used to reacting. And those are the kinds of things that you can simulate up to a point, but I'm never as a trainer going to put you in a drill where I'm going to put on shoulder pads and knock you on your ass. Mm -hmm. So there's only there's limits to those uncontrolled situations that you can be put in as an athlete, but you want to try to do as much of that as possible so that if a guy does start to roll up on you, maybe you do have the reaction time to get your leg out of the way and you don't get rolled up on. It's tough. It's uncontrolled. That's the whole point. And I'm not going to blame Trent Murphy or Chris Thompson, two guys that got rolled up on for their injuries, and say that it's their less than that that severe or the of that happening as much as possible. And there are things you can do. Man, hmm. you're really nitpicking there, right? I, I know, mean, it, it you're is, talking about a split second. Absolutely, which is why I don't blame them at all. Yeah. I, I those guys. I mean, Chris and Trent. Neither of those guys saw it coming. But what you can try to do is just try to make your reaction time as best as possible. And maybe you're able to pull your leg out. Maybe you're not. If you're planted in the ground and that guy rolls up on you, you can have trained for that moment mm -hmm. 10,000 times. Malcolm Gladwell, number of hours. You know, and, and there's nothing you can do. But you want to try to make sure that you're How doing as you much as possible. How can you simulate that, though? That up on, not Pretty as much. Pretty hard. Um, but you can in your movement. So, like, 
Aaron Rodgers, obviously he got hurt this year. He rolled mm-hmm. out and got slammed down. There's nothing you can do. But, like, the way he throws, for instance, he's always up on his toes so that he doesn't get rolled up. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're a line, you're going to have to set an anchor. There's not a whole lot you can do as an offensive lineman or as a defensive lineman trying to get that push. Um, but if you're, like, if you're a receiver blocking on the outside, I would probably stay pretty light on my feet if I could. Um, you know, these guys don't really block that much anyway. I'm trying not to get hurt in that way. But still, like, hey, coach, I was out there on tape. Like, I would, I would probably try to stay pretty light on my feet. Well, yeah. Um, I just, I mean, I just think it was just a lot of bad luck. Yeah, there was, you know, there what, absolutely was. I and chalk it up ninety percent of it's just bad luck. Yeah, and then the soft tissue injuries and things like that. It's a matter of how you're training. Are you, you know, a lot of what like Tom Brady's trainer talks about, I think, is, you know, fooey. But when you talk about like making sure muscles are long and strong, that they're not short. So when, a lot of muscle training is done on contractions. So when it's short, that's when a muscle pulls. 